We are here to talk about the newly published in 2024 Handbook of Human Mobility and Migration from Edward Elgar Publishing. I'm here today with Mirna Safi, Professor of Sociology at Sciences Po and Director of the Center for Research on Social Inequalities, and also Ettore Recchi, Professor of Sociology at Sciences Po and part-time professor at the Migration Policy Center at the EUI. So I'd like to ask, how would you summarize the content of the book and the way you've structured the handbook? Well, you know, um, the mission of handbooks is to um, illustrate the state of the art of the research field. Uh, we do this, but we also innovate by formulating a number of questions that we have asked uh, some leading experts in sociology, demography, political science and geography. And um, the outcome is, is a handbook with three sections, one on concepts and theories, so we call this section rethinking. The second section is about the structure and representations of human mobility and migration. We call this section mapping. And the third section is about governing and uh, it talks about the governance and uh, policing of borders and transnational movements. This makes up 16 chapters, one per question, plus an introduction that outlines our own view of human mobility in the contemporary world. The edited volume brings an overview of recent research in matters relating to the study of migration and also to the topic of mobility. What do you see as the added value of such a work in the field of migration studies? I think the, the added value of, of the handbook is to highlight the interconnectedness between um, international migration and uh, geographic mobility um, more broadly. Um, of course, uh, mobility, geographic mobility is, um, is central to the human history uh, and this phenomenon goes much beyond the 3.6% of the planet's inhabitants that are currently living in another country than uh, their birthplace uh, and the, the handbook tries to stress uh, these aspects. Uh, to borrow the words of uh, the first contributor of the handbook, Homo sapiens are growingly uh, um, um, a mobile species. And it's quite obvious that mobility has become um, uh, easier and much cheaper uh, across the last uh, decades. Uh, nonetheless, actually, uh, um, all forms of mobility are not equally accessible to everyone and questions such as what type of mobility, who moves, uh, what do people need to be able to move? Uh, what type of borders are people uh, able to cross? Uh, have become all these questions have become really, uh, I think, um, more and more central to the field. And we have in this handbook a, a series of, of, of chapters that uh, try, for instance, to present different uh, types of mobility for. If you consider international mobility, of course, it's a core, it's a core topic, but also internal mobility, what we call sometimes regional mobility, permanent versus non-permanent uh, mobility, uh, return migration, circular form of mobilities and onward mobilities, etc. Some chapters also focus on categories of mobile people, such as, for instance, student, refugees, child migration. And some chapters also focus on the border uh, governance and infrastructures, the role of the state. Um, so we try to put together all these uh, insights in one, in one handbook. How would you describe the evolution of the research field of migration studies over the past couple of decades? Has there been a big change in the topic since its inception? Well, migration studies, first of all, has been growing exponentially over the last 20, 30 years. Um, in 2020, there was um, an article in the Journal of Migration Studies that found out that there are 45 specialized journals about migration worldwide, and about 2,000 new articles are published yearly on the subject of migration. Um, we like to distinguish two broad streams of migration research, one centered around the mobility of people and the other one about incorporation. The latter stream has always been more popular, but it's slightly declining as of recent. Um, 
um, the so-called integrationist paradigm of migration research has been called into question. The old controversy uh, around assimilationism versus multiculturalism has been uh, fading away and has been replaced by more evidence-based studies on migrant discrimination. On the other hand, studies uh, about the mobility of people and its linkage with migration uh, are on the rise. Um, issues like uh, the selection of migrants, uh, migration trajectories, migrants' careers, um, transnational ties, borders and border control, visas, passports, all these issues are becoming more salient and all of them are reflected in the content of the handbook. Mm. Could you tell us a little bit about whether migrants have become a distinct category in the study of social stratification? And if so, how did that come about? Yeah, so uh, indeed, actually, migration is uh, inherently related to social inequality issues, just firstly because actually, as I, I said in the former questions, I actually uh, uh, people uh, don't have the same capabilities today to migrate. Um, and this is all the more uh, true when it comes to actually crossing uh, national borders uh, and uh, international forms of migration. Um, so in the, in the handbook, actually, this is really our one of the backdrop of, of, of the handbook and our take on, on this research. And um, so you'll find in the handbook, for instance, one chapter uh, discusses the social stratified nature of uh, high-speed rail and, and airplane mobilities. Another chapter is um, focusing more on um, selectivity uh, of migration, uh, including socioeconomic selecti selectivity, educational selectivity, and also health, actually, uh, related selectivity. But more generally, to, to answer your question more generally, um, we also think that migration has somehow become a, a, a distinct category in the study of social inequality in general, core studies of social inequality, for instance, including studies that focus on educational inequality, labor market inequality, housing inequality, health inequalities, well-being, etc. Uh, these studies have been using um, migration let's say it as a, as a control variable, uh, even when the focus is not really on migration, but more and more actually these studies have been mobilizing uh, the migration status variable as a control variable, somehow similarly to what we do with gender and age. Um, so I think the, 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 the handbook also covers this aspect, this relation between migration and social inequality, discussing the mechanisms that underlie this, uh, um, this relation, such as, for instance, the legal mechanism, the economic mechanism, and the symbolic ones. Thank you very much, Mirna Safi and Ettore Reki. Sciences Po.